Tia, this is my friend Bernie. She's about as weird as I am, but in a different way. I'm dialing dates of birth on the phone. I'm typing in phone numbers on the dates of birth. That's it. I think I've lost it completely. Who's having his um, hoofy doofa, Selkie Perkies? <laughs> Park, that's Shirley. Shirley. No, call me Shirley. Don't call me Shirley. You're the best receptionist here. I'm going red now. Jose Sadler. Boy. And have a seat. I'm Dr. Tatlock. Hiya. So I spoke to you last week, didn't I? I think. And you've been having lots of different symptoms, really. My left arm goes numb quite it's quite numb right now. Um, quite frequently. I've been getting dead legs sometimes as well, but the arm quite quite often. Um, I think I've done my blood pressure before, my blood pressure was quite high, I think. But I don't know what you're saying. Um I go to the toilet quite a lot a, a week, quite regular. Get dry I, I sometimes I, there's been times where I've, my one eye's been a bit blurry. I thought it could have been a, I saw a stroke thing. I thought it was a stroke, but I was thinking I'm still alright, so I don't know. Yeah, so, I mean, it doesn't sound typical of a stroke for all these different symptoms like that. So, so where do you feel it? Is it all over all, all down the arm, but I, I kind of thought it was gym, but I don't think it's gym. OK, but can you, you can move it yeah, fully? I can move yeah. it, I can do stuff like, like, like it works. Up right above your head and yeah, things? Yeah, yeah. works and things. Like... And does that change this kind of pain that you're getting? Nah, it's just a numbing. It's like pins and needles sort of thing. Is that okay. amazing? Yeah. And so does it shoot down? Do you feel like shooting pain? It's more of really? like a cramp. And you were saying about your legs as well? Sort of yeah, things? the same sort of thing, but it's more so the arm, more okay. so than the legs. And that but... can be both legs, can it? Yeah, from time to time. Not the same, both at the same time, but one leg can go and it just, just mm -hmm. feels numb and I feel like I have to yeah. shake it off. Like... OK, all right. Do you mind me doing your blood pressure while you're here, then? Yeah, that's fine. That one's on That one's good. OK. We are very grateful for all the help we get from all the NHS people. Doing another good job as ever. Trying. When they all grumble about the national health, you get your odd troubles, you get your odd problems, but on the whole, I think it's a wonderful facility and we're very lucky to have it. Hi, Rob. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. So when I spoke to Pat this morning, she said that she thought you might be a little bit better today than yesterday. Do you think so? Mm. Yeah. Rob's main care provider is Pat. Wipe your mouth. Let me just wipe that. They have a lovely relationship and it's obvious that his health and wellbeing is on the top of her priorities. I didn't even know what Parkinson was when the doctor told us what Rob had got. You know, Parkinson's is an unwelcome guest, if you like. Sometimes I say to him, you'll beat that Parkinson, you're stronger than that. Tell him to clear off, you know. The carer said this morning, phone your doctor. So I rang the surgery and they yeah. rang me back and said, ring the 999. Yeah. As far as they're concerned, it's a chest infection and possibly a urine infection. Yeah. There are two options, I think. The first option is that we carry on with the antibiotics and if anything gets worse, then we have a low threshold for going to the hospital. I think the decision to send someone to hospital is a very difficult one. I think it's even more difficult when someone has an illness such as Rob's, because actually the level of care that Rob is receiving at home will be far greater than the level of care that he receives at the hospital. And that's not because the nurses aren't trying really hard, but obviously it would be far easier for Pat to detect any changes rather than anyone that doesn't know him. And often changing that environment um, will obviously cause some stress. And stress on a condition such as Parkinson's is only going to make the symptoms worse. What do you want to do, Rob? <laughs> He wants to stay here, yeah. I mean, I think if that's not settling down, um, then it may be we do need to do a um, referral up to the hospital where they do a nerve sort of uh, conduction test just okay. to see they can, you know, see how the nerves are working and see if there's a reason why you keep getting this ongoing problem. Yeah. Um, but we'll wait for the bloods to come back before we do that, and then we can see if there's anything on the bloods or anything we need to do okay. first. Okay. I wouldn't, wor I wouldn't worry too much about it. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you. Who's forgotten the car? <laughs> oh, your car? Rude. Is it this? Is that yours? Or do I get to keep this one? Is that yours? Oh, you're going to take that home with you. All right, I'll be in touch. Thank you. All right, thank you. See you. Bye. Bye. I said, let go of me. 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 I've had a blocked ear the last two days. I've got um, tinnitus in my left ear. So let me know if there's any pain at all. No, I've got a lot of wax. This one's still... Still ringing. This one, this one feels blocked as hell. No, it's ready. Just give it a OK, so that's kind of unblocked now that you pulled it. Yes, I heard it squelch. Mr Galliner. Hello. Hello, Helen. How are you? You all right? I'm all right. I'm just going to upset you now. That's all. Oh, no. I'm sorry about that. That's called premeditated. <laughs> it is. <laughs> In you come. You're not going to really upset me, are you? Please don't be annoyed at me, but let me try and explain oh. this to you. Uh, I rang up on Wednesday to see a doctor about my ears, you see. Yeah. I've been having these drops for three weeks. And they said, we can't get you in part, but when you go to see Helen on Thursday, ask her to look in your ears. Now, I don't want to upset you, so come in You're not going to upset me, don't Is that all right? Will you look in my ears? I will have a look for you, but let's do this first, because this is what you're here for, and then we'll... Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. That. It's not a problem. No, it is. You've got enough to do. We, um... Don't do washouts no. here anymore. You but have they to wouldn't do it. I rang up and asked them, and they said, have you ever had a stroke? I said, yes, we can't do it. Straight away like that. That's strange. I don't understand why they've said that to you. I'll have a look, and if they are blocked, yeah. obviously you've got to persevere with the olive oil. Right, right. Olive oil is the best. That's it, that's it isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's it, fine. you've got it. But do you know what? You're paying a lot of money for that. I'm not bothered. Um, yeah, okay. but good old bog-standard olive oil off the shelf in the supermarket is exactly the same. Right, I'm sorry. All right, and then when you've finished using it, yeah. you can use it for cooking. Yeah, you're very kind. Thank you very much. Your blood's fine. Oh, that's fine. Now, you're going to have to bear with me because I've got to go and have a look at the scope. Do you want to take your hearing aids yeah. out for me? Right, let's have a quick look for you. Um, yeah, that's completely blocked with wax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let yeah. me have a look at the other one. You'll find maybe oil and stuff in there. And the same with that one. Right. You can't see your eardrumming right. either of them, which is why you've probably gone very deaf. Right. OK, so um, when you put the olive oil in, what do you do? I lay on my side. Yeah. We put one and a half drops is what they right? And I lie there for ten minutes. I put three or four drops in. Right, right. Lines up, but mass on your side and really massage it here and here so right. that it gets right down the canal. And sometimes when the wax softens, it expands and that's what makes you right. even more dense. Where dead. does the wax go? It's there to yeah. protect your eardrum. It's to stop, like, flies yes, and know, all sorts yeah. of things yeah. getting down to your eardrum and right. doing damage. Right. So that's what it's there for. But normally we just sort of get rid that's of it right. ourselves. Sometimes we find people who wear hearing aids yeah. produce a little bit more We've been as in well. Hollis, uh, and I don't know if I picked someone up there, you know, but... Yeah, it, just... it doesn't look like any infection no, in that's there. Good. It's certainly yeah. just blocked, that's good. really blocked yeah. with hard wax. Yeah. It is proven that it will eventually yeah. come out. Right. Um, but it can take quite a long time. All right, I'll, I'll do that and we'll persevere. Thank you very much. That's for a pleasure, time. no problem. And I do apologise for no, taking that's your time absolutely... Thank you very okay. much. Bye. <laughs> God bless you. Take care. All right, bye bye. <laughs>